This is Dr. Ali Mugabel, and we are doing vestigial sideband. In the following lecture, we are looking at the following objectives. We we'll look at introduction. We we'll look at the definition of vestigial sideband or VSP, and then we we'll look how to design. We we'll look at some examples onto how to design the filter for VSP, vestigial sideband. Now, vestigial sideband modulation. If you remember, we started with we started with the, the message. This is the baseband signal, and to go to here to double sideband subless carrier, we have to multiply by cosine. Now, once you get into the double sideband, you can use filters to get a single sideband. So if you filter this side, you get upper sideband, or if you filter the second side. Or the lower side, you get lower sideband, single sideband. We have two types of single sideband. Now, what would be? What if we want to generate single sideband using selective filtering? And we find out that there is no guard band between the two, uh, bet between the upper and the lower part. So, what if there is no guard band? What is going to happen? If you go going to use a filter here, you will end up with the following. You will end up having a vestige because your filter is not very sharp and you will have extra part this extra part is called vestige so we will filter in a vestige of the other band now the question is can we recover this signal can we go back to our original message and the answer is luckily yes even if you don't have a very sharp filter that gets you exactly the upper side or lower side band and you end up having a vestige, your filter is something like this, you got some extra part, yes, you can go back using a proper band bass filter. So we can go back if we use the right band bass filter. Now, to summarize, what one would say, why? what's the advantage of going to vestigial sideband? The advantage is relaxed filtering. So if even if there is no guard band, we can use a filter that is far from being ideal. Okay, the other point about the advantage or disadvantage of single of, of vestigial sideband. Okay, I'm, I'm marking this as positive and negative because if you compare it with a double sideband, it has the advantage of using less frequency, less bandwidth, and if you compare it with single sideband, it's a disadvantage because it uses more bandwidth. Usually, we trade off the bandwidth. We use extra. 25 to 33 percent greater than single sideband instead of going to double sideband or going to lower sideband which requires uh, high accurate filters or sharp filters we use vestigial sideband and we trade off the bandwidth so in this slide we have defined what is vestigial sideband and why we call it vestige we call the extra part vestige Okay, what we see at the top here is uh, what we see at the top here is the vestigial sideband modulator, and we see here the vestigial sideband demodulator. We're starting with the message. The message is going to be modulated to get the double sideband suppressed carrier signal. So the expression for the double sideband suppressed carrier signal is this. It's shown here. We're using the factor of two just to make things simple. So the spectrum will be just the same as the original message shifted to the right and to the left to omega c at omega c now this expression is going to be applied to a vestigial sideband filter so let's express this in frequency okay this is the frequency expression of the double side band suppressed carrier with a scale of two and now this is going to go through the filter this filter is applied so we get the following expression in frequency we domain we just multiply now we'll continue to with the blue signal which is the vestigial sideband this is going to be fed to the demodulator demodulator is, up, is multiplying again by uh, 2 cosine omega c t and which result in shifting the entire spectrum at every omega omega will be added will add to that omega c and subtract from it omega c okay, so let's do this so if you subtract omega c you get the, fo the following terms this omega becomes omega minus omega c omega minus 2 omega c because we have minus omega c another minus omega c become minus 2 omega c 
If you subtract here, minus omega C cancels with plus omega C, and you get M, M of omega. Fantastic. Now, we are going, this is just the subtraction. There is another expression for, for adding omega C. So start from here, add omega C. If you add omega C, it cancels with the negative, and this becomes 2 omega C. Okay, so what you see here is X of omega. It's the expression here. Clearly, you can see that those two expressions are at high frequency, at high frequency, because they are shifted to omega C and minus omega C. They are the message shifted. And if you notice in this, you find a two baseband expression, two baseband messages. So we expect that at the output of the low pass filter, after this green filter, things will cancel. These two high frequency components will cancel out. And what remains is the following expression. Fantastic. So this expression is the output at Z of omega, which is here. If this turns out to be the message, if this is equal to M of omega, then we can get back our message and things will be accomplished. Remember that in cascade and systems, if we have two systems in cascade, which means that I have the first system, H1 of omega, and we go to another system, which is H2 of omega, and you want the output to be 1, for the two systems to cancel each other, then the transfer function of the first one, H1 of omega, it should be 1 over H2 of omega. This should be reciprocal. That's simple. But in our case, our two filters, they are not in cascade. There is this process between them. There is multiplying, multiplying by cosine. And this is one of them is band bus filter. The other one is low bus filter. So the relation is not very straightforward. We had to go through the derivation. So now let's get back here. If this side equals to m of omega, we can cancel m of omega from both sides, which means the low bus filter should be 1 over the vestigial side band filter with the proper shifting. And because it's a low bus filter, this need only be true for frequencies less than or equal to B. Or if you are using radians per second or omega, less than or equal to 2 by B. This is a very important equation. And we're going to use this to solve problems. Remember that because it's a low bus filter, we cannot say it's just 1 over the HVSB. We need to bring things to baseband, and then we uh, got that to be true only for the low bass band. I will take this equation to the next slides. We'll see some examples and we'll solve more problems. Okay, so this is an expression that you need to remember. The expression that we have derived. We notice if you if somebody give us HVSB, if somebody is giving us the vestigial sideband filter, and he wants us to design HLPF, the low bass filter, as function of omega. So how do we do this? We need to use this expression. So to look at this example, here is a filter. This filter, here is the carrier frequency. If it was an ideal filter, it will take, just take the upper sideband like this. But because of it's not ideal filter, a relaxed filter, there is some vestige here. Some vestige here and some effect here. And this is why we call this vestigial sideband filter. Remember that this is the carry frequency, and we're trying to get the upper sideband with some vestige. So if this is the filter that we are going to use for, for, for the band bus filtering, what is the filter that is going to make us recover the signal? We need to do this, apply this equation. So this equation, in fact, has a couple of uh, operations. The first thing we need to shift. Shift, we're going to bring everything in, in the first figure at the top by adding omega C and subtracting omega C. If you add omega C, then this guy here, okay, this part which was minus omega C will come to zero. So this is going to come here. Okay, similarly for the positive part, for this part, it's going to show up at higher frequency but we don't care about it because we are just building a low bus filter. Similarly, if you want to subtract, okay, there is two shifting, we add and subtract. So this guy here, if you subtract, it's going to show up in the, low, in the baseband signal. 
another image for this one is going to go at low frequency but as I said we're just designing a low bass filter we are only concentrated on the low bass for frequencies less than B all right so the first operation is shifting then we need to add if you add these two expression you can add them point by point so we add this plus this this plus that okay and we got the following expression the shape is what you see in the third uh, figure now we are not done shifting addition and then and the last step is to invert so there is inversion it should be one over so if this was one if this is one it will remain the same because one over one is one but if this was two here at the top then the value here must be one half all the values must be inverted so one half will be two two will be one half and this is why here the peak become the minimum here okay again I would like to remind you that we care about the band of interest up to B what comes next should not be a problem which I mean, should be removed we are just designing a low bass filter so this is the steps to design the filter we'll see some more examples now here is a special case just the same example but we're saying the condition for a distortionless demodulation is this this is, the, this, this is the condition to design the vestigial sideband receiver filter if you make the following condition if you impose the following condition that you design the, the band bass filter in a way that the sum itself equal to one okay then there is no need for uh, there is no need for the filter at the receiver side we just use a normal low bass filter because if this is equal to one if the denominator equal to one one over one is only going to be one so we can use an ideal low bass, low bass filter so in this special case if we design um, if we design the vestigial sideband with odd symmetry around omega then we can avoid the receiver filter something like this so if we have this kind of filter then things will add up to one so here is an example of example of for the special case which requires ideal low bass filter it is the original uh, message after shifting this is the band bass filter this is the vestigial band bass filter you can see that there is odd symmetry here around omega all right so if you make the shifts they're going to add up together to give you a constant one so at the receiver side all you need to recover the signal is just an ideal filter because the signal itself is already similar to the transmitted one what we added from here were removed from here so with the shift they will make up for each other so this slide and the one before they are related this is a special case where we designed the filter to be uh, uh, to require only an ideal low bass filter at the receiver okay the following example says given the transmitter the transmit filter design the receiver filter or the receive filter given that the carrier frequency is 20 kilohertz and the bandwidth is 6 kilohertz now let me show you what was the ideal case this is like trying to filter the upper side band so ideally would would have something like this if we had a single side band from 20 to 26 this is 6 kilohertz but unfortunately as you can see we have a vestigial side band filter because we have some vestige here some extra part of the spectrum so how to design the filter remember the equation that we, we derived the receive filter will be the inversion of the shifted and summed version so we have three operations first we need to shift then add and then invert if you want to shift then basically this blue part of the spectrum this blue part of the spectrum will be shifted by an amount of 20 so when you subtract it's minus 20 this is going to be this point is going to be at the zero again the red part of the signal or the negative will go into a very low frequency and now in the second part we add omega c so again this red signal is going to come up here the the minus 20 will map up with uh, zero and the, again the blue part of the signal the right part would be shifted to high frequency but I'm making this a little bit gray because this is not going to be part of the filter our design is a low bass filter so we're done with the shifting and now we need to add remember if you add these two lines you get 
a horizontal line. So the shape of the addition will look like this. Now, again, we are all interested up to 6K. Huh? So everything above that is going to be dropped. If you invert, the one remains as one. The addition here, which was half, this is half, it's going to go up and it's going to become two because you take every value here and you invert it, one over. So one over one is one, one over one is one, one over half is two. So the shape after the addition is going to be this. That's to say, if you use this filter as a bandpass filter at the transmitter side, you will need to use this filter at the receiver side so the impact of the vestige will be made up and we get our message correctly. So you can you can zoom, you can uh, pause the video and think about the example again. Now, uh, a reasonable question now would be raised. We have seen that advantage of we went uh, the advantage of vestigial sideband is to give you a trade-off in bandwidth between single sideband and double sideband. But now it's valid to ask: Can we recover vestigial sideband using envelope detection? We have seen that it's possible to do that with double sideband by adding the carrier. It's possible to add to do this in single sideband by adding a very large carrier. So how about vestigial sideband? So the question is, can we use envelope detection for vestigial sideband? If we add a carrier, of course, without carrier, we cannot get uh, to use envelope detector. And the answer is, the performance is between double sideband plus carrier and single sideband plus carrier. In double sideband, we needed a carrier. We need to add a carrier, which is just greater than the message. It's greater than MP. So remember, A has to be greater than MP. So just greater. So A has to be just greater than MP. While for the case of single sideband, A, the added carrier must be much greater, or the amplitude of added carrier must be much greater than MP. So how about the case of the of serial sideband? The answer, the performance will be in between. We need it to be greater than MB and really greater than MB, but not as, as bad as in the case of single sideband. Because remember, adding carrier means less efficiency. So the required carrier amplitude is more than, the required carrier amplitude would be more than the case of AM and less, the case, less than the case of single sideband. So we have answered the question. Now, just a few comments about, usually we, we usually end our modulation by stating where is this being used. So practical examples for using vestigial sideband. Vestigial sideband is used in broadcast television. It's also used in video baseband, in, in video, uh, for example, if the video baseband is 4.5 megahertz, okay, then the required uh, bandwidth in double sideband is 9 megahertz because it's double and the required bandwidth for single sideband is going to be just equal. What they use in vestigial sideband and broadcast TV is about 6 megahertz. You can see that we are not single sideband, we are not double sideband, but we are in between. And the objective is to relax the design of the filter. So that's the last type of, of, of modulation we cover in amplitude. Uh, there will be another video where we summarize uh, all types of modulation, double sideband, single sideband, vestigial sideband, QM, and we compare them together. So please make sure that you visit that video, uh, the big picture, amplitude modulation, the big picture. Thank you for your time.